and welcome back to another discussion of awkward discourse where we embrace the awkwardness of you know um, conversations so today I have some guests I'm not solo Jomo and I am going to have them introduce themselves so uh, to my left go ahead hi I'm Giselle Lane aka the golden mistress and uh, yeah I beat people and fuck shit up <laughs> <laughs> and then to my right go ahead hi I'm Yaz pronouns are she and they I get beat up by people there we go that is <laughs> one out of an intro okay so I'm not even gonna beat around the bush I just want to get started um where is everyone from like born and raised give me who you guys are um and a little background okay well I was born in Brooklyn I grew up in the Poconos mad random and then I moved back to New York when I was 18 and just been involved in like an alternative lifestyle ever since. Okay, now did you grow up in a family where this was kind of encouraged, or is this like a lifestyle that you discovered solely on your own <laughs> with no help? Um, <laughs> it, I grew up Muslim, honestly, so mm -hmm. no, it was definitely not encouraged. But then I found out later down the line, my mom used to be a dominatrix. Oh my god! At one point wow. in her life, yeah, I know. Wow. Oh my god! Did so, mom give you the? No, that's that's crazy. Bro. She didn't even give me the tea. It's okay. in the genes. Yeah, it's in the genes, apparently. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know what? It's so funny because our parents try to, like, conceal certain things, and it just comes out in certain ways. You're like, oh, wow. Yeah, right. I'm like, oh, man. Okay, okay. So not too much, but that was <laughs> good. And then you, a little yeah. on your background. Um, So born and raised in Bushwick. Mm -hmm. Actually, born and raised in Bushwick. Um, Ooh, shade. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've lived in New York City my entire life. Uh, parents, no clue. But, like, I've given them little, like, tidbits here and there. The fun part is, like, the crumbs. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So, yes. crumbs, crumbs. Let's hope they're picking up um, <laughs> what you're putting down. But how did we get introduced to this lifestyle? Was, did someone take it to a party? Is it, like, a Craigslist finding? Like, how did this <laughs> uh, get started? Um, so, I used to do sex work for a long time. Like, just regular from street walking to mm -hmm. dancing to mm -hmm. posting ads. And through there, that's how I found people that kept contacting me for certain fetishes. And, and at then first, that's how I started meeting people that wanted certain fetishes. Mm -hmm. And I had an ex, and he taught me more about BDSM. Mm. So then we just learned together. Like, I taught him porn. He taught me BDSM. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I just kind of grew. Do all the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you're a dominatrix. Yes. Okay, perfect. So... What are like some of your rules that come to being a dominatrix? And is there a difference between like uh, women who are of color and a non-woman of color? I'll just put it that way. Um, I'm, my, my bad, my pronouns are they, them. Oh. But uh, <laughs> it depends. So for me, I really, I don't really have rules because I like to let people live as free and as autonomously as they like. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yes, I'm a dominatrix. Yes, I can be controlling. But at the end of the day, you're still a human with a voice. So no matter how much I may want you to do something, if you're uncomfortable, I'm just not going to force you to do it. Like, just have respect at all times. Respect my pronouns, and I'll respect you. Mm -hmm. That's just my number one rule. When it comes to being a person of color, um, it's definitely harder when you're a person of color, when it comes to dominatrix. Because unless you're, quote-unquote, slim and white, no one cares. No, You have to, like, prove yourself through your skill how good you are. Mm. And unless you have that skill, no one's going to respect. Ooh. Fortune, it's so true. It's sad, but it's true. Now, you, you, uh, you're talking like a boss. Like, <laughs> you have this handle. So, you acquiring these skills, like, where did you get started? Because I know you said that you had an ex who introduced you to the life. Um, so, I guess people consider this, like, quote unquote, alternative lifestyle. So some people will say that their relationships are vanilla, whatever that may mean, meaning monogamous or um, et cetera, et cetera. But to get introduced to this lifestyle, um, when did you start saying I can like charge people for some of this sadistic stuff? Um, if it is sadistic. No, it's very much sadistic. <laughs> <laughs> very much therapy, sadism, masochism for the other party. But mm -hmm. um, but starting and also like very um liberating right yes. i'm assuming for some very much that i've never mm -hmm. felt more like myself until i started practicing kink and living a more alternative oh. lifestyle it felt like i was hiding a part of myself and now i don't feel that way anymore 
And how long have you been doing uh, this field of work? Six plus years. Oh, okay. So I am old. <laughs> I, I was going to say, you, it's pretty young, but I feel like when they say for you to master the actual trait that you do, six years is like li- literally like you're, you're a getting, blip of time. Yeah, no. Like you're getting your foot in the door. Like you're, they know that you have the talent. They want to see how far you can go with it. Six years is it not seems, small. It's, not, it's still small, in my opinion. No, yeah, it definitely is. It's like you're never really done learning. You never know a lot. There's still a lot of kinks I probably don't know about. Mm-hmm. I don't, because mm-hmm. I just don't find them interesting. But oh, the okay. ones I do practice, Facts. <laughs> I have them down to a T. Like, I, I got them. Okay. But outside of that, like rope, that's not my thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to do no design, but I don't know. It's intricate. Yeah. yeah, it's intricate. You got patience, what I don't have. So, <laughs> okay, got it. And then one more question before I get yeah. out to the side. I, I, I might just have to hold off on it. <laughs> okay, so how did you get introduced to this lifestyle and being a sub? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Which is sh- short for? Submissive, yeah. Okay, I thought it was uh, subservient. <laughs> I mean, it could mean whatever you want, like anything you can imagine you can have. <laughs> okay, all right, so go ahead. Um, I got into it. I made... How do I explain this? I <laughs> always watched the porn of it growing up. I remember just being super into <laughs> You said it. it's so sneaky. She's <laughs> mm. looking around. <laughs> and you're sitting here like this. I was like, are you watching? <laughs> um, no, I watched the porn always growing up, and I saw like these big production of dungeons and stuff, and mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, that's a fantasy. I didn't realize that fantasies can come to fruition if mm-hmm. you just like meet the right people, do things. Uh, so I remember a play partner of mine had started doing kink with me, and I was like, whoa, normal people can do this? And then I realized it's like a whole, I started talking to my friends, and everybody's like, yeah, we're in polycules. Like, th- like if you want to do this, you can just come to a party. And I was just going to like, the like pre games and I was well, when you say parties, what type of parties are these? Is it just regular like dance parties mm-hmm. after parties <laughs> after the club? Like what type of parties are these? It really depends. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was going to pre games for with my friends was like uh, like raves. Like they do like kink raves. They do like play parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, people do like kink tasting parties. Like anything. You okay, want. so. After you say that, I'm just gonna actually elaborate some more because you just mentioned play partner. So, and then you said kink raves and then kink. Yeah. Okay, so break them down. Yes, uh, play partner is someone I meet to do kink with, who I play in an exploratory way. Um, play parties is places that you go to either do kink, have sex, whatever you mm-hmm. know. The party is geared towards. Uh, a lot of parties geared towards different things. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to a lot of like women, people of color parties, like specifically because that is my safest space. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and uh, what other things did you read? Um, you said the kink rave. So what's a kink, kink rave? rave? Oh. Oh, yeah. Is that uh, like an annual big bash, like the no, end all be all? I've never been to a king. What? Right? Okay, we have fun. to go. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I have to find somebody. Uh, there's a party that I go to called Bound, and I perform kink there. Okay. Um, so it's like, it's like a uh, Bound is this company that does uh, throws raves at basement. They mm-hmm. like they're like all over the place. They're doing their seven so year. Uh, yeah, it's like a full rave, and then. Mm-hmm. There's some like underground stuff <laughs> where like <laughs> you can go and like do kink. Like there's dominatrixes who like go mm-hmm. and do full blown scenes. So like mm. yeah, you go there. A lot of my friends go there and we pre plan scenes to do in front of, in like a place where people are going to consent to mm-hmm. watch these scenes mm-hmm. and happen. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. It's very fun. Sounds fun. I'll tell you guys. I'll, I'll show you guys later. <laughs> please, please, yes. Okay. Please do. So now shifting back to you. Can you name a few kinks that exist out there and ones that you participate in? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there, like, literally anything. Let's start by this. Anything can be a kink. Okay. Literally anything. Like, oh, you like scratching your left big toe. Woo, good for you. Oh, okay. It makes you arouse, whatever. Okay. Um, so I do a lot of mental domination. Mm-hmm. Impact play is a big one. Mm-hmm. Wax play, knife play, cupping, financial domination, human furniture, <laughs> pet play, human ashtray, 
smoking, it, like anything. This outfit I'm wearing alone, the pants, the latex of it, this harness, leather harness, that's a fetish. Yeah, you guys should see the whole look. <laughs> if she's comfortable, she'll show up, but she looks really, really good. It's like it's like an outfit. I feel like it will be a good club banger. Dang, um, <laughs> dang, I'm but, getting hot. But, um... <laughs> Okay, so you were just explaining that. So, for example, what's um, financial? Piece? So, financial domination. So, this shirt, I got it from Mistress Marley. It says reparations, right? Yes. Get mm-hmm. your reparations from the white man. But anyways, mm-hmm. so it's when a sub or a slave gives you money just because for existing. Just <laughs> literally. Like, I woke up a bad motherfucker. Thank you for my money. Okay. okay. <laughs> literally. It could be any. Some people like that feeling of losing control and you taking control of their finances. Some people just really want to be like, I'm paying you because you're so great and amazing. Okay, so how much have you made through that type of money? If you're comfortable sharing what's No, I don't mind overall or like, let's just say one person. One experience. It depends on the type of mood they're in. It can be anywhere from 800 to 10,000. It all depends on the person. So, yeah. Okay. When I, when I, the most recent one was, what, 1,000? Oh, Which is like, okay. it's light, but... I it's better than nothing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I didn't people, do anything, so. so it was like, okay, cool. Okay, so do you have the power to make a request? Like, oh, I'm sorry, I think I didn't have the mic near my mouth. I'm no, you're sorry. Straight. So, um, my question was, do you have the power to make a request? Like, I think I'm in the mood for twenty thousand. <laughs> yeah, no. So some people, if I know they have it, like, yeah, I can make that request. If I know you don't got twenty men, I'm not gonna ask you for that. Okay, <laughs> so basically. People of all financial backgrounds come to you mm-hmm. to have this kink experience. Yes. Okay, so if someone wants to get in touch with you and be like, hey, um, do they say I'm only willing to spend 500 And you're like, okay, not bad. Or they t- like, do you start with a budget? I'm taking um, this down like a, so like a financial coach. Like. Now you have time. So everything starts like before a conversation even occurs or anything mm-hmm. like that, you have to pay a trade. So a tribute, everyone's base tribute seems to be around $50 because it's okay. a fair price. If okay. you don't have $50 to at least start the conversation off or show your appreciation. You need to start over. And please don't message me because yeah. you're talking fair about enough. nothing 90% of the time. <laughs> and $50 is basically like two meals. You could get two apes and a roll up. Ooh. And in, in we terminology, <laughs> that. So because $50 is not really money like it used to be. But so yes, yeah. if you don't have $50... Turn around. Okay, so they pay this tribute, and then what's the next step to getting so, closer? So, <laughs> once you pay the tribute, if you just want to do something virtually or online, then you can proceed to talk. If Ooh, you do you yeah. uh, have to see them, or is it, just, it could just be audio? No, sometimes it could just be over the phone, over a DM. Sometimes <gasps> it is visual, like a FaceTime or face-to-face. Okay. It all depends on the type of person and what they actually want to experience. Okay. Okay, so now next question. What's, um, you said furniture kink. What the hell is furniture kink? <laughs> um, so it's when a person is exactly that human furniture. So like a foot ottoman or like. Mm, okay. I think I've seen this online. That's what I'm thinking like... about right now. But like, <laughs> okay. You can put your feet up on someone. You can put your arms up on someone. You can sit on them like a chair. Okay. Yeah, or do this. Yeah, people, people or do love that. the armrest. Yeah, they okay. love the armrest thing. What? They do. Okay. Got it. Get you some <laughs> because you're like agreeing. With them. <laughs> I, I wanted to. I want to know, like, um, since you said that you are a sub. Yeah. Since you're a sub, this is what your dominatrix might request of you, and you're willing to do that. But do you get paid as a sub or no? No, it's like a fulfillment. Like a but do you do the paying? I don't do thin. I don't do those things. So, like okay. I said earlier, whatever you, whatever fantasy you have, can come to fruition. A lot of kink is for fulfillment. So I do a lot of things. I do everything that I want to do. Like this okay, is all right. power dynamic. So you are only able to give away the power that you have in yourself and are willing to give away. Okay, and just just because I want to be nosy, yeah. what's your uh, sign? Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm getting water sign, but I could be wrong. I don't know anything about this. I'm a Scorpio. Fox. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, okay, yes, you are, you are a water sign. Okay. Um, and what's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Oh, oh I was gonna sense. say fire. Okay. No, this is very Virgo. mundane. Okay, boring. that makes sense. As Virgo. Okay, perfect. Um, Wait, all what right. about you? What sign are you? 
as the boss of the show, I'm not sharing myself. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. Send a $50 tribute for it. <laughs> Facts. Send her tribute for her sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So now that we're talking about the uh, world of dominatrix and subbing, I, I don't know why I keep thinking it was like subservient, like, yes, I'll listen to you, daddy, or Some whatever. Some people like that. Yeah, but you just, you just say that. Anyone gets what they want. Wow, this is a fun world. It's like, why don't you have it your way? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Burger King. Yeah, man, it's Burger King. Damn, that's been a minute. Um, Facts. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the name. Okay, yeah. next question is for safety reasons, right? Mm-hmm. How do you keep yourself safe in these type of situations, where there's, especially when there's money involved? Um, money or not, there's a vetting process. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, like, some people require your ID. So I have like an application I require people to fill out. Mm-hmm. And then even then, so like either send a face picture, your ID picture, a penis picture. So I know you're not a cop. Um, you're not so a what? A cop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like all these certain things, but then it'll just be like answering all the questions. If your answers seem like, I just want to get my dick wet. Like, no, I'm not. Oh, not. Okay. Not answering you. If you misgender me, I'm not answering you. Mm-hmm. If you just seem like you're just not like you can be unsure mm-hmm. because it's your first time, sure. But there's a difference between being unsure mm-hmm. and just being ignorant. Mm-hmm. So if you can pass the vetting process successfully, and then like even after that, maybe we'll meet in a public place, mm-hmm. or maybe mm-hmm. like meet at an event like a munch or a play party, something mm-hmm. where there's more people. Okay, what's a munch? Literally, besides what a munch is, literally a play party without the kink and the sex and stuff it's literally just a meetup so like you can go in Chili's you'll see a bunch of people hanging out at the bar <laughs> they could be normal they could be kinky who knows anyway gotcha okay <laughs> and cause I always see this on TikTok God forgive me I don't know I'll be on the app a lot and there's so much to go. oh actually yeah right <laughs> um, <laughs> um <laughs> it's not what people might think it is but um so with TikTok, TikTok, they always talk about how there's so much money to be made, how fabulous this lifestyle is. But if you could be honest with someone who wanted to join this type of lifestyle um, and be committed and disciplined, what would you like advise to this person who wants to like maybe inquire about this lifestyle, whether they want to be a dom or a sub? So I'll get to both of you with that. Um, I was just smiling at the lady. <laughs> um, but anyways, always ask questions. Mm-hmm. Always ask questions. Try to surround yourself with the people that you want to learn information from. So okay. I always tell people in the beginning, if they don't know anything and they're fresh, I'm like, go take the BDSM test. Mm-hmm. Go to BDSMtest.org. Then go to FetLife. Make you a FetLife. Mm-hmm. But answer the test first, honestly, because you okay. got to post your results on your FetLife. Right? And then, then from that FetLife, people don't like FetLife, but mm-hmm. I do. Because if you use it correctly, you mm-hmm. can really meet great people and network. Mm-hmm. So they have, like, munches. They have events. You can add people mm-hmm. in your area. It's mm-hmm. really helpful. That way you can ask more questions. But don't just blindly go to a play party. Like, get some info first. Do some research first. Okay. Okay. All right? Make a friend. So there are some people who just randomly get there, and they're like, this may not be for me. Or it's too much at this time. Yeah, because if you just go in dry basically or unaware you might be offensive to some people Mm because in the lifestyle and even BDSM in general it's all about consent and respect Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you don't give consent and you don't have respect then you're not going to get far some people might walk in and think it's normal to just start touching people Mm -hmm. you don't touch people even if it's just a hug you have to say can I hug you Mm -hmm. can I touch you do I have consent to speak to you even Mm -hmm. what are your pronouns things like that okay and Um, yeah my advice for other subs um I would say the vetting process is your best friend, Mm -hmm. Uh, especially when you play with power dynamics. Mm -hmm. Uh, I tend to stick to people of color when I do my kink. Uh, Learn that the hard way. Um, So, um, yeah, kind of like set your standards of what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, So vet people. Mm -hmm. Instagram and FetLife are really powerful tools that I use um, to see who your mutuals are, Mm -hmm. like who... You trust those mutuals to begin with if you uh, have like good like good relationships with these people mm-hmm. and then uh, every party that you want to go to most of the time if it's a good party will have their own vetting process so you have to like go check these places out yeah consent okay. is also your best friend so now because <clears throat> I'm nosy um, <laughs> you said that you had to learn the hard way yeah about only sticking to 
POCs, even though sometimes POCs can be dangerous too. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. really about all it's human beings. But, but just to track back, uh, what exactly happened that you said that you had to uh, learn the hard way? Let's see this. Um, well, make it as vague as possible. You know it's him. Um, no. Um, uh, yeah. Are you safe from this person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say, are you yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, you'll know it's him, though, if he ever, you know. Um, no, just uh, I play with power dynamics and um, psychological kink a lot. Okay. So a lot of my stuff is, like, giving away my power, letting people make decisions for me. Mm. And uh, I do a lot of, like, trauma-informed kink. Mm-hmm. So people who play with me have to, like, know about my traumas, mm-hmm. know about, like, what brings me to kink, why I'm doing this, all mm-hmm. those things. But I realized recently that people also have to be identity informed. So okay. like, I'm a mixed person. Uh, I have a very ethnic name. Like, mm-hmm. you know, my full name is very ethnic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had this white dominant who boasted to be very, like, trauma informed and identity informed. Oh, okay. And then we went out to go be social and he, like, called the cops on black people. And I was like, you cannot do that and he's like wrong is wrong and i'm like no 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 no. you didn't respect me and my identity to think that i would not want the police near me you know mm-hmm. and uh he's like boasting all his like police friends and i'm like oh i will never speak to this person again mm-hmm. um but he's already somebody who's like blacklisted from the community so i was just being a little stupid and <laughs> being there oh okay it's my Fair. fault. It's my fault. Vetting process. <laughs> nice. Nice. And back to the vetting process. But with that being said, have there been any like sour moments in your experience as a dominatrix? Um, not really. No, gladly. I'm mean, thankfully I can say that because I really do take it seriously. Mm-hmm. So I try not. I always, even throughout an entire session, I'm always asking, "Are you okay?" I'm always mm-hmm. asking, "Where are you at mentally? How are you feeling mentally?" Is this for first timers, or you do this with even this those that you've been everybody, doing for years? Everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, how much experience you have, because at any moment you could just switch in your mind, mm-hmm. and now you're like, "I don't want to do this anymore," mm-hmm. or "I'm not feeling this anymore," or it's something just breaks Now wait a minute. Do you keep the money, or do they take half of that back? <laughs> so not everyone pays. <laughs> not not everyone pays. So like, I go to lifestyle parties a lot okay within the lifestyle okay so like i'm not going to charge someone within the lifestyle or like right so this is just a kim, them, like, companion yeah this is someone that true like some people like to do femdom and like bdsm in general mm-hmm. for work and then for fun and i do both so i like a balance Got you. If you don't mind, can you please just so, uh, show off some of your, um, do I say devices or tools? Um, tools, devices, implements. Um, so right here, these are floggers. You can pick those up. Yes, right. So these are floggers, right? I got these because they match the pants, but mm-hmm. you can't see my pants. But yeah, so these are just basic floggers. That one over there has more of a, it's leather, faux leather, so it has more of a study, study, yeah, stingy and thuddy. As stinky and study. Yeah, so study impact. Well, this feels like it would hurt. Right? You would think, but it doesn't. It all depends on the flick of the wrist. Oh. It, I know this sounds crazy, right? But I always tell people, like, for an example, yeah, sure. Um, the wrist movement <laughs> is like cooking crack or beating eggs. Oh, okay. If I'm talking to a hood person, I say cook and crack, and they immediately know what I'm saying. Everybody don't cook <laughs> crack from the hood, though. I know, but right? The egg it one is relatable to me. Because per- I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. But it depends on the type of person. If they were sitting there with the boots and then like the hoodie, looking like they just got off the block, bro, it's like cooking crack. Oh, okay, I got it. Fact. Okay, okay. If you look like, all right, you just chilling, it's like whisking eggs, that same motion. <laughs> right? And then these are more like stingy, thuddy, more so thick. Okay, so with that being said, I want to see a de- uh, demonstration. <laughs> of course. Of it. Okay, you are all on, so go go ahead. Mm-hmm. So um, before I start like beating anyone, I like to give them a massage with their body warm up. So it's not like just the first thing they feel is impact, it's the warmth of my hands. Mm-hmm. The warmth of my hands. How does that feel? Yeah, so this is just your basic one, two, Yes. Yeah. 
with the stroke. Nice and slow. Thank you. You said I need all the coins. Okay, you said this is doesn't is not that painful, so. No, it's really not. Um, so it's a little lighter. Yeah, it's just more so of a thud. I spoke to her yesterday, so um, I know that she likes thud more than sting. Okay. Do you always want to have a negotiation conversation with anyone? I'm fat, I'm not a bitch. Yeah, but you always want to have a negotiation. <laughs> And talk about what a person likes and doesn't like. Mm -hmm. That way it's not like you're just going in blind. Ooh. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Deep breath in. Exhale. Take a deep breath in and hold it. On the third hit, you're going to exhale, okay? One. Two. Exhale. to pass another object. So this is a candle, right? I got a light. Did anybody have a lighter? I don't I don't know if we could have fire. Exactly. So here. this is a candle. I'm gonna just hold it on there. <laughs> this is candle. It's made a little transplant wax candle. Um don't use any candles. Like you can't just be like, oh I'm gonna go to Walmart and give me a candle. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's also with, like soy and paraffin so it's not gonna really hurt the skin when you use it. Okay. And you always want to put like a layer of shea butter down or something. Ooh. Right. Okay, so just to be clear, don't get no cheap Walmart candle because yeah, it's very no. flammable and yeah, it can and go up. It's gonna burn. You're gonna okay. have like welts Ooh. and burns yeah. on you. <clears throat> okay. And it's not good. Um, so with the candle, I use my knife Ooh. for oh. knife play. <gasps> it's also another form. Sharks, be careful. Don't move. So you have to announce you have the knife in your hand because if not, and they make a sudden movement, now you go to jail and you go to hospital. So if I'm like doing a show or something, mm -hmm. I would hold the knife in my mouth like this. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Oh. So if it was hurting her too much. Mm -hmm. Hurting them too much, they would say their safe word. Okay. And that's when that would all come to a halt, right? Tell them how you feel so far while I grab this other object. Dude, that tickled. <laughs> oh, it tickled, not hurt it. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay. And then my other two objects here. <laughs> so this, someone made this for me. He was like living in his car homeless. And I was like, I'll use it so I can promote you. I'm like, how can you make money? You're not homeless or anything. Okay, yeah. All right, yes. so you can use this as a collar. Are you okay with it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll use it like that. And that way I'm able Whoa. to pull the person and also use this side as well. Now, can the Dom, I'm sorry, the sub now request to be called names during this time? and? Yeah, so that's all stuff we would discuss in the... Um, Negotiation. It's, okay, gotcha. So, like, what do you want to feel? What toys do you like? What toys do you not like? This kink and knife. So, these cops, <laughs> I'm going to try to put it somewhere you can see it. I'm going to put it right here. Are you okay with yeah. marking? Okay. So, I'm going to attach it here. Let me know when it's too tight. Okay, well, she, she can go. Right. So, these usually leave behind, like, circles and bruises and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it feels good to be, like, the pressure holding it. You can also add it into like, there's a white piece I can add in here that'll cause more pain when mm -hmm. it's attached. Mm -hmm. It's actually used for like actual massages and stuff. But you could use it this way too. Mm. And then these brass knuckles, right? People always like, what are you gonna do with your brass knuckles? This is why I do it, my brass knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I try to always mix massage in mm -hmm. with the kinks I'm doing. That way your body's always relaxed. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're just going through a bunch of trauma mm -hmm. the whole time. The whole, this block is going to be so happy today. <laughs> so <laughs> always, I like to hit the cup sometimes. And what is that object that you have? It has like fur. This, so this is just a softer paddle. It's a paddle, but soft. I have harder ones. Okay. But I wanted to bring this to the soft one. Oh, so cute. Right? So I can just like 
hit the cups. You can notice her skin's getting red inside the cups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that was amazing. And you can see the circles I left behind. Yes, I can. Oh, look at this one. That's kind of ridiculous. It's his. <laughs> look at that. And you always want to rub a person after anything you do. So mm -hmm. like, that's why it's like, hey, I fucked you up. Okay, bye. You don't mind standing up for me real quick? You know, in case of all my good bits and the other time. Oh, this is a good, this look good. <laughs> Come here, I'll help. Thank you. Thank you for that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're back. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed that live demonstration because uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what this is because I'm learning so much that there's so many kinks, there's so many ways of, I guess, relinquishing your freedom because I just thought that, you know, um, a sub was someone who just comes in on their knees with a mask on and a gag ball, but this was a completely different experience. So and I also was like enjoying it. I'm like, oh my God, this is very interesting and um, freeing. I mean, I don't know if I'll do it ever in front of human beings in the <laughs> studio anywhere in my life, but um, I do appreciate you all doing it. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, so my question was, how long How yeah. long can this go on for? Like, is it like, what's the tantric, you know, sex? Is it something like that? Or sometimes you don't even have sex, but is it like just that amount of like time to spend with? Somebody. 25 minutes or 10 minutes, I don't know. I don't know, it depends on the person, mm -hmm. the time you have. Like, so if it's at a play party, I try to keep every scene to like 10, 20 minutes. Okay. Because there's usually once I start beating people, there's a line. So, Ooh. yeah, so it's like you can't spend, like, now if it's just like personal time, we could be there an hour, two hours. Mm -hmm. We can be there for a minute. Wow. Because it gets so, like, I love doing what I do. So, I don't ever have to get touched physically as far as like penetration. I could just keep beating you and doing all this stuff and I'll have fun. You could keep wetting yourself, but I'm chilling. Okay. Right? Yeah. Wow. So no, you don't want any type of reciprocation at all? No. And I'm not saying I don't ever bottom or I don't ever switch. I'm just... Bottom? When I hear bottom, I think about gay men. Okay, so yeah, somebody replied to my post, one of my trans friends, talking about, what's this about? I'm like, no, it's not actually bottoming. And so... Okay, yeah. Explain <laughs> that bottom ago. You being <laughs> sub... A sub? So yeah, basically. Okay, okay. So a sub is someone um, who is submissive, but usually someone who's a sub has a dominant. When you're topping mm -hmm. or bottoming, it could be for anyone. So like, I'm not her dominant. Mm -hmm. So I'm topping her today. Okay. She's bottoming for me today because I'm, again, not her dominant. But you could still play with other people within the lifestyle. Now, if she was actually my submissive, mm -hmm. they were actually my submissive, I would say sub or slave. But no, mine at work. Losers. Okay. Losers. No. <laughs> okay, so now the question that also like kind of just um, came to mind was relationships and uh, partners, like... How does one navigate that in this type of lifestyle? Or are you like non-monogamous? Like what's the ideal situation? Or what's the situation? No, you can go ahead. <laughs> you can think about it for a, a bit. <laughs> um, the biggest thing I'm trying to like hammer home is like anything that you want, you can co-create. Um, okay. Everything is based off like consent. So like you can go around and be like, I'm looking for A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. So, personally, I'm non-monogamous. Uh, I have a few people I do kink with. I do kink at parties. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, oh, mm -hmm. um, so it's I go and I have people that I do specific things with. So mm -hmm. I don't do the same thing with every single play partner. Mm -hmm. I like have some. I have like chaos impact tops. So mm -hmm. I go to like parties and then people see me and they're like, oh, that's yes. Yeah. Like I'm gonna go with mm -hmm. her and I'm like yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a few people. Um, then I have like other people that I go to do specifically like uh, trauma healing things, and okay. I'm just like, I want to like cry and like. <laughs> So basically, if someone's like, I need it to be just you and me, uh, none of this lifestyle anymore, we're just going back to. Oh. <laughs> um, personally, 
Oh, that's a dub, my love. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you too. Yeah, no, that's not happening either. Okay, and have you been there before where it was just like that lifestyle? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. It's depressing. And like you said, when you got here, you was like, I'm never going back. I'm free. Okay, gotcha. So do you guys even believe in like marriage or unionship of... I have a wife. Okay. You. Oh, no, I'm good. Um, <laughs> I tried. I used to. When you say wife, legally married? Yeah, yeah, I have a wife. In oh New Orleans, God. we're long distance wives. It's oh, like, yeah. No, no, we met on a dairy farm in Fairmont when we were 14, all right? We know each other. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. okay. Maybe that's why it even works, because they know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This person definitely knows me. Like, uh, yeah, I was uh, engaged to a to my high school sweetheart, to a man, uh, and they were just like, that's not who you are. And I was like, you're so correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so they brought you to... Yeah, they brought me to, like, my slutty side. They, like, brought me all across Brooklyn and, like, was just like, you don't have to be ashamed to be, like, a sexual creature. And I was like, all right, all right, let's do this. Yeah. Okay. So that was how your cherry got bopped in this world. I guess so, yeah. <sighs> okay, okay. Where can people find... Uh, you all, if they're, you know, interested in this lifestyle, talking to you about this lifestyle, being vetted, and then, you know, moving one step closer, um, where can the folks get to you at? Um, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, you can just Google Giselle Wayne. Mm -hmm. um, Fet Life, as we said earlier, just mm -hmm. any type of social media, and it could start with just a DM. Mm -hmm. Like, I will reply, and I know I look like a cunt, sorry, I'm not, though. <laughs> I promise I'm not. I just have a bitch face. It's okay. But, like, just message me. It's okay to ask questions. That's how it all starts with a question. And no question is too dumb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. Some questions aren't too dumb. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, Fair enough. There we go. Mm -hmm. And um, you? Yeah, I think uh, getting into the lifestyle and social media is your best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do I plug myself? I mean, you have the right to do whatever you please. Uh, show, share your socials. Uh, <laughs> yes, so uh, social media is your best friend. Uh, on Instagram, I am NYC Yaz, because I'm Yaz, I'm from New York City. Mm -hmm. um, and yes. that life is like my main portfolio that I use mm -hmm. to display my kink, because you can post bruises there. Um, and so yeah, uh, Yaz420. That's the one, that's a good one. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, those are my two main things. Yeah. Perfect. Um, again, thank you as always for watching. Um, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe because I would love to hear from everyone. Um, and I'm pretty sure my guests would too, you know. Keep it cute and classy. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.